And David, real quick, um, just kind of give, I guess, viewers out there a little bit of sense of your background, mm -hmm. maybe uh, how you matriculated to Purdue, the type of coach you are. Uh, well, born and raised in Indianapolis, Indiana, so um, know a lot about uh, Purdue and uh, obviously the state in general. Um, I bounced around, spent a long time at Western Kentucky University, and then have been uh, coached at Indiana, coached at Marion. I went to Butler, mm -hmm. um, so I've been a lot of places in the state, and then um, just got here through my relationship with Coach Brom, uh, Coach Hagen, uh, Nate Dennison, all guys that I knew uh, prior to coming here. And, um, you know, obviously coaching at this level in the Big Ten is, is, is a big deal, and so it's something I wanted to be a part of. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, coaching, um, you know, it's kind of what you see is what you get. Uh, I, I tell the guys, you know, when you do something good, then, then we're going to praise you, and when you do something bad, we're going to correct you. And uh, sometimes that correction is a little more intense based on uh, the type of mistake, and sometimes, you know, we know you just got to play the next play, and we'll get it off of the video. But uh, just uh, open, honest, and, and make sure we're communicating. You know what I mean? I, that's the biggest thing. I want guys to know exactly where they stand with – with, uh, with me, with where they are on the depth chart and where they are in the program. And I think when they know that, then they can, they can operate at a high level. Just, you were an analyst last year. Mm -hmm. What did that entail? And how much did you learn from that? And now that you're back into full-time coaching, how has that kind of benefited you? It's, it's one of the greatest questions in all of college football. What does an analyst do? Um, you know, I did it in Indiana. 12 years ago um, and what I've learned is every situation is different kind of depends on the dynamics of the staff um, and so to sum it up I would say it's a glorified professional GA because you do do some grunt work and you do some some truly just crunching data uh, some data input sometimes you do sometimes you don't just depends on the situation um, but really what I ended up being was just kind of a right hand to uh, Coach Lambert, um, working with the linebackers and um, a lot of organizational stuff beside, uh, behind the scenes and, you know, just helping him have his extra set of eyes. I think in this day and age when it's somebody like me who's got experience and has been a coordinator, been a position coach, so on and so forth, you know, you that person does some different things and lends some – um, some opinions here and there, and, and Coach Lambert, Coach English, Coach Hagen were great about. We had a great room. That was one I think that's been documented. You know that uh, there was no egos, and so uh, there was just a lot of collaboration. And so um, you know that role. You know whoever we hire in that position next year, it'll probably be a little bit different, but you know similar in some aspects. So it really does depend on the the dynamics of the overall staff. Just how much do you? you did you need to be back on the field coaching, and how much has that kind of um, uh, revitalized you, revitalized yeah. you, and all that kind of stuff? I, I would say I really wanted to be back <laughs> on the field. Um, you know, it, it certainly is refreshing, and I enjoy it because mm -hmm. I, I did uh, miss, you know, the, the interaction and those things. Um, but, you know, you do what you got to do for the good of the team, and that was my role, and you accept your role and embrace it and do the best you can, and, and good things happen. Any, any big influences on your coaching career? people that you think have shaped you the most, maybe try to pattern your, your coaching after? Well, uh, I, I don't think I'll ever get away from the influence that Jack Harbaugh had on me for my first seven years as a, you know, as a, a full-time coach and a coordinator. Um, there's a lot of things that I take from, from him. And I've, I've told, it's, it's funny, um, I told Coach Brom uh, when I got here in the fall, and after about a week or so, I said to myself, I said, this kind of feels like back home to me, which is home is kind of home bases with Coach Harbaugh. And what I learned and kind of what I believe, which is you get better playing football by playing football. And we get a lot of reps and it's something Coach Brown believes in. And, and you know, it's an up-tempo uh, and, and you just get a lot of reps. I mean, you play a lot of football and that's how guys get better. And so, um, so Coach Harbaugh definitely. And then um, after that, you know, it's really a, a lot of different guys that I worked for over the years. Uh, you know, it's a collection of all those people, but, but Coach Harbaugh would definitely be number one. Just to kind of sum up your personnel, I know you have some injuries, you don't have everybody out there, but what what, what have you seen from your guys like Kieran and yeah. uh, Clyde and, you know, Samisi not in 11-on-11 right. stuff, but right. yeah. what, what are you seeing? Well, I think, you know, 
Uh, KD and Clyde have been running since, since OC's been out here lately. Um, and those two have really progressed. They've been really, really pleased with, with their knowledge and just understanding of where they're supposed to fit and uh, communicating. Uh, when OC was in there, I thought he was coming along really well and uh, he was really doing really well from uh, understanding the defense, answering questions. So I, I thought he was taking that next step. He'll get back this week and you know we got to get the, the rust knocked off there. Uh, Jacob Wahlberg has done a really nice job filling in at Mike and doing a great job communicating, which the Mike's got to do. Uh, so I've been really pleased with him. And then hopefully we'll get Samisi for some reps uh, because I don't, you know, Samisi got hurt before I ever even realized who he was. Um, and so I've actually gone back and watched some of his video from, from when he was playing and I guess it would have been the, 20, the COVID season right. and even prior. And so I'd like to get him out here and at least get some reps on film for us to, you know, talk about and, and evaluate him. Um, but he's been locked in in the meetings and everything. And then, you know, we got some other young guys. Tristan Cox moving back there has done some good things. And I think we're building some depth. Obviously, that's what you do when you have some guys out. You're able to get other guys a lot of reps. And um, that's what we've done. And so I think it'll it'll help us in the future. Yeah, obviously he's out, but. What have you heard of Jalen Graham? Have you watched him on film? Just kind of give us your assessment of, of, of anything you've been able to digest about number six. Well, I, I would tell you this. Number one, I was with, I mean, Jalen Graham's not new to me. I was around him obviously all last mm -hmm. year. Now, the way we're really treating Jalen is he's with the safeties um, because everything we do when he's in, we're able to do, you know, he, he, he does defensive back type of stuff. So he doesn't come to the inside linebacker meetings anymore. He's with Coach English. Um, but I know this, I mean, he makes us very multiple as a defense. And when you can have that type of a guy that uh, can play against the run in the Big Ten, but then when they do start to spread you out and get into three wide receiver sets and he can cover a slot, then, you know, that makes it, you know, you, you don't have to sub. And so we, we certainly are, you know, like having him out there.